On the 5th of July this year, Foo Fighters dropped a three-song live EP out of the blue. Unlike most other bands, they ignore the temptation to create hype around their music and just decide to put new stuff out like that. The EP is called 00950025, numbers that most likely refer to the 25th anniversary of their debut album that was released on the 4th of July, 1995. On Twitter and Instagram, the band posted this message to their fans along with a link to the live EP. Quote, a good day to take a look in the Foo Files. How about a few elusive live tracks? We've seen some Reading 95 tweets. Officially submit them now or any other Foo Fighters story you like here. You never know what we've got up our sleeves. End quote. In this video, I thought I'd share some thoughts about this EP, the curious message they wrote to their fans, and also take a quick look at some of their early albums. Now, like I said, the EP contains three live songs. Watershed and For All The Cows, played live at UK and London's Reading Festival in August 1995, and Next Year, performed at the Chapel in Melbourne, Australia in February of 2000. Watershed and For All The Cows are songs that were first featured on the band's debut album. While Next Year first came out with their third album, There Is Nothing Left To Lose. The studio version of Watershed is quite hard-hitting and is easily one of the band's heaviest and most energetic songs. It reminds me of the same energy you get from other songs of theirs like All My Life or White Limo. But this live version is even more powerful. Grohl's vocals are unhinged, the guitars sound a little bit different as if there's a note added to the chords, but the instrumentals are spot on though. Really groovy stuff. Then we hear For All The Cows. I've always thought of this song as a bit of an oddity. It definitely stands out on their debut album and from the rest of the songs in general with its bluesy and soothing verses. And the combination of those verses with the immediate thrust of the chorus is just amazing. Again, another great performance. The last song on this live EP, Next Year, is probably the most consistently soothing rock song you'll find on here. The drums really stand out in the mix here, which I love. I've never heard such a clear sound coming from Taylor Hawkins' drums before. At least not in a live setting like that anyways. The singing and overall playing here is excellent as well as you probably expect. The songs on this EP definitely reminded me of how much I love their self-titled album and there's nothing left to lose. Foo Fighters, or their self-titled album, is as close as we'll ever get to having a Dave Grohl solo album. He made it entirely on his own with the exception of the song Ecstatic where he had the Afghan Wigs guitarist Greg Dolly do a guitar part. The album helped Grohl get past the breakup of his previous band Nirvana and the death of Kurt Cobain. It was a fun project that made him think about something else. He didn't want people to know that he made it, so he called the project Foo Fighters. Despite of not having his name on the record, it generated a reputation among record labels, and soon after, he signed with Capitol and gathered a band to take the album on the road. In an interview with Classic Rock in May 2011, Grohl said this about the album, quote, The first Foo Fighters record was not meant to be an album. It was an experiment and for fun. I was just fucking around. Some of the lyrics weren't even real words. Despite of not being intended as a serious release, it generated massive success and sprouted one of the leading rock bands of today. It's also one of my personal favorite Foo Fighters records. There's something very different about this record that I can't quite put my finger on. So if you haven't listened to it before, you should definitely check it out. Like I mentioned before in this video, Next Year is a song off of their 1999 released third album, There Is Nothing Left To Lose. This is the first and only album the band recorded as a three-piece, consisting of Dave Grohl, Nate Mendel, and Taylor Hawkins. It's distinctive because of its softer and more experimental sound. In some ways, the band became more secluded. They bought a house in Virginia and made a studio there to record this album, left Capitol Records and two of their bandmates. In a 2006 interview with Kerrang!, Dave said, 
It was all about just settling into the next phase of your life. That place where you can sit back and relax because there had been so much crazy shit in the past three years. At that point, it was me, Taylor and Nate, and we were best friends. It was one of the most relaxing times of my whole life. All we did was eat chili, drink beer and whiskey and record whenever we felt like it. When I listen to that record, it totally brings me back to that basement. I remember how it smelled and how it was in the spring, so the windows were open, and we'd do vocals until you could hear the birds through the microphone. And more than any other record I've ever done, that album does that to me. This album, ha this album also has a special place in my own heart, to be honest. The album has its very heavy moments that hit hard during the first half of the record, but the second half of the record is Foo Fighters at their most calmed down state. It's a perfect album to play on a countryside road trip with your friends. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Now, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the band posted a thought-provoking sentence when they promoted their new live EP. Quote, you never know what we've got up our sleeves, end quote. This statement sparks your imagination for what the band is gonna do next. They've always been very inventive in terms of album recordings, concepts and audience interaction. But this time it seems like they want to take the audience interaction to the next level. If you click one of the links in the post, you'll be taken over to this site where they encourage you to share a story related to Foo Fighters. You can upload a video or a photo, share the story and even a message directly to the band. I think what the band is starting to realize is the value in user-generated content. Now that everyone's got a phone, it's very easy to create photos, videos and stories and share them with others. Maybe the band wants to integrate these stories with their live shows. Or maybe they'll use fan-curated content to create material for new merch or even a new album. Who knows? I've always been a fan of their projects myself. The one where they toured and did shows in their fans' garages, that was super crazy and very kind. Their garage and analog recording project in Wasting Light was really interesting. And hell, I even think the recording in eight different cities to capture each city's sound, that whole idea from Sonic Highways was also really, really interesting. Although I personally didn't like the sound of that album, I just loved the idea behind it. Foo Fighters always seem to reinvent themselves. They always chase something. And that's why I'm proud to say that I'm a fan of them. They just never stop surprising me. So with that conclusion, I want to say that that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I talked briefly about some of Foo Fighters albums in this video, but I would love to make more in-depth videos on each of their albums. So please let me know in the comments below what Foo Fighters album you think I should make a